Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 23. In this tutorial we're going to add a little bit more UI to our UI panel and we're also going to start dealing with keys and locked doors. Don't forget click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else I upload on my channel about video game development and with that in mind let's get to work. So first and foremost, uh, I have brought in two textures right here. Uh, one is of a key and the other is of a pistol. So let's select these and change the texture type up here to Sprite right there and click on apply. Now just to make you aware, uh, I have imported them from here. Uh, these won't be on my website because I technically don't have permission to redistribute these. There's just something from a quick Google search. Uh, you'll be able to find them. Uh, just go on to Google, type in, I don't know, pistol silhouette or whatever, and you should be able to find this. Like I say, I can't redistribute these because these are just for uh, personal use as it were. So you can easily find something like this anyway. So the way we're going to do this with the weapon first and foremost is if we go to the weapon panel and I'm just going to turn off the uh, fade in screen so we can see it a little better. And on the weapon panel, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to UI and add in an image, not a raw image, just an image. Then what we need to do is drag and drop the pistol image onto there and then just stretch it so it kind of fits a little better into the panel. Like so. Uh, let's shrink down these key slots as well. They're a little bit too big, I think, right now. And obviously we're going to use them a little later on this tutorial. Okay, so next thing, let's right click and rename this to pistol image. And I'm going to turn it off. So this only appears when we pick up the weapon. So in order for that to occur, we need to go to our handgun pickup trigger and open the script handgun pickup. And in here, let's add in another variable. So public game object pistol image semicolon. And then down here, add that in as pistol image dot set active true semicolon and save. So head back to Unity and let that compile. And next thing to do is we need to add that pistol image as the variable onto there. So now let's press play. And just make sure that image appears when we actually collect the pistol. And it does. So it's obviously not fully representative of what we have. It's just a quick image I've sourced because I, you know, I don't spend too much time trying to perfect a lot of these things. You should spend that time perfecting whatever you can. So the next thing to do, uh, let's actually have a locked door and a door that we can open with a key. So let's head back down to the doors. So I'm just going to double click here on that fake handgun to zoom in here. So let's think about this door. Currently this door opens based on the trigger right in front of it and the animation we have is only set to open this door. But we're going to use a cool little trick where we can use that animation on another door. So let's take this object. In fact I'm going to select my move tool this object, this object, as well as the trigger in front of the door, which is first door trigger. And I'm going to hold control and press D to duplicate them and bring them all the way over here to where this brick wall is. So hold control, press D, and then let's hold control and move it so it sits nice and flush against the brick to about there. So I'm gonna quickly extend the floor so we can see this fairly well so we're actually able to walk through the door. Now currently as it stands if you try pressing play and go through this door it will glitch. Uh, we need to resolve that glitch like I say with a bit of relativity. So the way this works is the animation is static in its coordinates i.e. if we try moving this door it will go back to where the original door is because it's still based on that first animation. But we can actually do something a little different. So before we do that, I just want to quickly check here in the first door trigger, I'm actually going to have this as second door trigger. And the door should be linked to this object right here. And it is. I'm going to rename this to locked door. 
And what we're going to do now is we're going to use that little trick to enable ourselves to animate this door in the correct position. Uh, I'll give you a quick demonstration of what I mean uh, if we try going through the door. So this door works fine. Oh, getting shot. However, this door this seems like it disappears, but it doesn't disappear. It animates in a different part of the floor or level or map or whatever you want to call it. So, how do we get that working correctly? Well, what we need to do is on lock door, if we right click and create empty and then uncouple that so it becomes its own game object. Next thing what we need to do is set the rotation to zero, make sure it's zero, zero, zero and scale to one by one by one. Next thing we need to do is drag and drop locked door onto that game object. And I'm going to right click and rename that game object to be locked door container. Next thing you need to do is find the actual coordinates of your original locked door. In this case, it's going to be position of minus 10, 2.5 and 6. So if we set that here, minus 10, 2.5 and 6, yes, it will make the door look crazy over there. But what we need to do is if we select our original game object, so it's containing that locked door and move it. So as the locked door then sits in the correct place again, so just over here, nearly got it, and down. So what's ha going to happen here is that locked door is in that same place, except when it animates now, it will be relative to this game object rather than the entire world, which means that its coordinates are going to be the exact same as the position of where this door is in the real world. So if we go over here now and try animating this door, it animates perfectly. So that is a cool little trick that we use with relativity because that door is now animating relative to its parent object, just like the original door is animating to that parent object, which is the scene in this case. So the next thing we need to do is turn off that second door trigger. So this door is now effectively locked. It won't open. Obviously, you can kind of sneak around the side. So let's kind of stop that from happening. There we go. So next thing we need to do is a key. So I'm going to have a key. Gosh, where can I have a key? Somewhere. Uh, so I'm going to quickly build up this little area here. And at the same time, I'm going to tell you where you can find a key. So if you head to the asset store, and type in the word key, you'll probably be presented with a lot of random stuff. And yep, a lot of it may be random. However, some of them are quite useful. And it's up to you whether you want to use the same uh, asset that I am going to use, but I'm gonna use one called free keys, this one, hand painted keys. So I'm gonna use this one here. It is free at the time of me recording this. Uh, so if you click import, download, get it into your project, uh, you'll be okay. Uh, if it's paid and you're not happy to pay, you can find keys anywhere, to be honest. I just quite fancy this one. So I've already brought it into my project file just to kind of speed things along a little bit. And I'm going to go to, uh, if I can find it, models, key, and let's go in prefabs and let's bring in this key. And I am now going to probably uncouple it from its original box because it's you know like that it's cumbersome as it is so yes okay yep we get the idea uh right click and we have to unpack the prefab i always forget that so now let's uncouple it out of there and delete the original game object and now we have the key and it's a little bit fiddly because it's in a weird position but let's have it as 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 and you can have it like that if you want to, or you can rotate it and just have it lying on the floor, whatever you want. There we go. Let's have it like that. So next thing to do is a trigger object around it. So right click and 3D object and cube. And let's uncouple that cube from it. And let's have it zero, zero, zero. So it's nice and flat and have it as 
0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0.5, that's too small. 1.5, 1.5, 1 1.5. I should probably do it, although it's a bit tall, but I, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's all academic at the end of the day. We're still picking up, up the uh, key. So let's turn off the mesh renderer, turn on the box collider, and let's go to our scripts. And let's go to environment, maybe. Um, in fact, let's have. Uh, let's create a new folder and let's have this as floor specific and right click create another folder floor 001 and in here right click create c-sharp script uh, first key as put a I guess because we can't have two scripts the same so let's say throughout the entire game we're going to have 26 keys, so it'd be A to Z. You know, 52 keys would be A to AZ or something. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. So, a couple of things we're going to need to do here. Let's get rid of void start and void update. We don't need them. And we need to have public game object key UI semicolon and public game object uh, lock trigger semicolon so we're going to do this in its simplest terms first so we're going to be able to pick up the key make it appear and then unlock the door so we can go through so we need to have void on trigger enter doesn't need to be private that can go and here we're going to put key ui dot set active true semicolon and then locked Trigger dot set active true as well. Then we're going to have this dot uh, game object dot get component in spiky brackets box collider up close bracket dot enabled equals false. And I think one last thing we'll do is we'll have the collider still there, but we'll remove the key as well. So we'll just set the key as another object. So public game object, the key, semicolon. Finally, the key dot set active, false, semicolon, save. So it's nice, quick, simple script, as always with this sort of thing. So we just need to basically attach this first key a script to our cube and right click and rename our cube uh, let's rename it to key pick or trig and then let's add the key to it so it becomes an object within there next we need to do let's add the three variables we have uh, into there uh, we'll deal with the key ui in just a second uh, but the second or trig goes on to locked trigger so now let's set that key ui so let's head back to our canvas and i just need to flip it around so we can see and we're dealing with let's go with the first one so key panel zero one so right click and ui and it's going to be image once again we need to shrink that image down uh, but first let's attach that key image onto there and now let's shrink it down to maybe 50, 50. There we go, that should do. Obviously you take the time as always to kind of refine this a little bit more. Uh, let's right click and uh, rename to key image and let's turn that off. Next thing, let's add that to the key trigger, which is up here. So let's head down and key image straight onto there save the scene and now let's press play and test out what we've got so i just want to kind of run through as if it were playing the game properly so let's go through our door. there we go he's gone some gold yes i know about the bugs don't worry there is a tutorial coming to fix bugs. Uh, okay, so let's try opening this door. Still can't. And let's pick up our key. And now we should be able to go through our locked door. 
Perfect. Okay, so that is how we can get the keys working with some locked doors. And obviously that opens a lot of potential for your game. Now, uh, I'm going to do something I, I've not really done, but I should have done quite a while ago is um, after this tutorial, I am going to build up the level a little bit more because although this level is rather small, there isn't much more that I want to do with it. So we're going to kind of move on to a couple of different things. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to focus on first is the face that is in the middle of the UI. Uh, let me press play. So we kind of set a slot for it in the middle. And obviously in the Wolfenstein game, just here, there is like a face. Uh, so we're going to deal with a little bit of a face and make it real simple. And, you know, like when we get hurt below 75% health, he's got a little bit of blood. So we're going to have it a bit red and do all that kind of thing. Um, so... The, uh, the level itself we're gonna I'm gonna build up but I'm gonna miss out a little bit and that's where we're gonna have the end of the level as well so we're gonna be doing that next tutorial too so guys until then you build up what you need to do you get your keys your armor more enemies whatever you need and I will see you in the next tutorial thank you very much for watching